this is Gail with Experiences You Should Have, your how-to guide for amazing experiences. Today, we will be journeying into a glowworm cave in New Zealand, and I'll be talking with Christine Pham on how to make this ultimate adventure a reality. I went with the legendary Blackwater Rafting Company, um, which is an adventure tourism company um, that takes you through through caves in, ad, in an adventurous kind of way. In Waitomo, um, the area with these glowworm caves in New Zealand, there are over 350 caves. Wow. So the cave that we use is the Ruokuri Cave. Um, and Wait, Ruokuri, now explain the Kuri Cave. Yeah, so Rua Kuri, um, Rua means two in Māori, and Kuri means dogs. Uh-huh. Rua Kuri, um, the translation is really the den of dogs or the cave of dogs. Um, and this is actually quite a spiritual place for the Māori people. So we are quite blessed to be able to use this cave to run these tours. So how, so how do you get to the caves? Um, so... When uh, when you first get there, you get down to base, and this is where you put on your wetsuit, uh, these big clunky wetsuits that you feel like you can't really move in. Uh-huh. Um, you have like a five mil long john and then a five mil jacket with like really thick knee pads and really thick elbow pads for all the crawling and stuff you're going to do in the cave. Um, and so you put these on, you put your helmet on and your harness on, and then so you So do you ride to the cave on foot or by boat? So you actually ride in a van. Oh, you ride in a okay. van to the cave. Yes. Um, and once you get out to the cave, so for my first tour, I get there and they give us, you know, a 15-minute crash course on abseiling. On... And Oh, wait, abseiling, is that like crawling on the ground on your abs or? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great guess. Okay, um, thanks. And it's, it's actually like, it is actually repelling, but it's the, it's the European word for repelling. Oh. So it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah, we just refer to it as abseiling. Okay. So, you know, Americans Learn something come, new every day. Yeah, Americans come and we're like, yeah, you're going to be abseiling or repelling. Same thing. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So you get you get to the the cave entrance and you can you can look down this this massive hole and you you can't see the bottom. It's just completely black down there. And they give you this 15 minute crash course on abseiling and you basically have to trust the rope and trust the harness to hold you the whole way down. So how far are you going down? Uh, it's 110 feet. Uh, okay, okay. Or 35 meters. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, you go down one at a time, and the art of abseiling is really just descending on a rope. Mm-hmm. And what we use is called a five-bar break rack, and the rope just weaves in through this rack, and you use the friction of your finger pushing up on the rack to descend into the cave. Mm-hmm. And that's all you have. You're, you're, you have your full weight on this device, on this rope, descending 110 feet into complete darkness. I love um, it. I and love so it. It's, yeah, it's amazing. It completely blew my mind. Um, because a lot of people think, okay, black water rafting, that's basically like white water rafting, right? But it's not because blackwater rafting is really just a cheeky term. Um, and so you. So is blackwater rafting repelling down this abyss in a cave into water? So it, it was actually a term that was coined by our company. Oh. And it really means, you know, like going down into a cave and going caving with glowworms, floating on a tube, doing a bit of climbing, doing a bit of repelling, that kind of thing. Got it. Great. Yeah. Great. This is fantastic. Yeah. Now, is this term trademarked or could, or do other companies use this term? 
So other companies do use this term. It was a bit too late because we started with this term. Mm -hmm. And then other companies were like, yeah, we do blackwater rafting as well. And so we actually had to rename our company to the legendary blackwater rafting company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but back to abseiling, yes. um, basically you go, you go down. And so as you're descending, you have your head lamp turned on, mm -hmm. um, but you can't see much cause it's completely dark and you just, you keep going. You don't never, you never know when the rope ends. It just keeps going Ooh. and keeps going and it's just completely dark. And you're like, you're doing these jumps off of the wall and you, there's still, there's still quite a bit to go. And you're just like, I don't know when I'm going to reach the bottom. Um, and then great. finally you hear, yeah. So you hear the guide's voice at the bottom. They're like, Hey, you're almost there, but it still sounds like they're so far away because of the echo in the cave. Mm. And so finally you get to the bottom and your palms are sweaty and your, your heart's racing. And you're just like, wow, I, I just did that. That was, I don't know how long that took, but it, it felt like a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you get down there Everybody How many goes people down. are with you right now? So it's completely amazing because when you abseil down, you are completely on your own. That is your, your experience in the cave. That's how you enter the cave. And it's just you, you control your descent. And when you get to the bottom, it's just that one guide that's there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But could that's you awesome. go with like a group? Could you go with eight people? Could there be eight lines going down? So the, the hole is actually so small that there's one point that you actually have to kind of shimmy yourself through. Wow. So it definitely wouldn't fit eight people. <laughs> no, no. So this is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, experience. Yes. Um, so, I mean, of course you get down there and then the next person begins going down the line. Okay. Um, and on this trip, the maximum amount of people that come on this trip is eight. Got it. Got so it. basically you get down, you talk to the guide and then you sit down, you can turn off your light and you can enjoy the darkness, right? Mm -hmm. Once your once your eyes adjust to the darkness, you look up and you can see just a few glowworms here and there on the ceiling. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing. I mean, you're like, wow, those are really far away, but they're actually quite bright. So, um, I mean, you, you were there and you wait until everybody else has descended. And then the guide tells you about the cave, about Ruokuri. And as I was telling you earlier, the, the Ruokuri cave, it's a very spiritual place for the Maori people because um, it was it was used... Um, for quite a few things. And back when the Modi people believed that caves were an entrance into the underworld realm, the original entrance that was found was actually used as a burial site. Um, wow. And so, or considered an urupa in the Modi uh, language. And so um, we don't go anywhere near there. Um, it's actually quite hard to find the original entrance of the cave. It's blocked off and there's it's overgrown. Um, and so we respect the Modi people and we actually don't go anywhere near there. Um, but it's amazing to hear your guides talk to you and tell you the story of what used to happen in this cave. Um, and so the Modi people, they actually didn't venture very far into the cave. They only ventured into the openings and that's where they laid their, their dead to rest. They're, they're important people to rest mm -hmm. because, um, they've, they've thought that this was the entrance into the underworld realm. And the Modi people also believed that the stars are actually their ancestors looking over them. So imagine that's this beautiful, the first Modi person to go into the cave, they already believe that caves are an entrance into the underworld realm, right? Right. And then they see these glowworms above them. Okay, so so paint the picture. What does a cave full of glowworms look like? Oh, oh, let me tell you. Okay, I have to tell you about my experience after the abseil. Okay, so 
we go, we sit there and we, we talk about the cave and then you carry on and your guide tells you to turn your lights off. So you have no idea what is coming next. You just know, okay, I'm, I'm going to trust my guide and we'll see what happens. And your guide, you know, clips you to a few things. And then next thing you know, you're just sitting down, relaxing with your light completely off. It's dark. And then you feel a drop. You're weightless. Mm. And you're flying through the dark with all of these glowworms flying past you. Now, how are you flying through the dark? Are you, are you just cruising on the water? So you're attached to a zip line. <gasps> this is fantastic. This yes. is fantastic. Zip lining in a glowworm cave. It's amazing. That's easily my favorite part of the trip. And to be honest, it's because you, you don't fully realize what's going on and, you know, you're in the dark. So all, all of your senses are heightened and, you know, you feel that you feel that drop and then you look up next thing, you know, you just see glowworms flying past you. Now, what color are the glowworms? Um, so the glowworms, I think are like a, a tint of blue green. Mm-hmm. Every, everybody debates this, you know, glowworms have a specific color, I, I assume, but, you know, some people come in and some people say they look more green and some people come in and say they look more blue. So it's, it's hard to tell you a, a solid color, to be honest. Right. Yeah. So it's a starry night sky in a cave of teal or, or blue gl blue green glowworms and you are zip lining past them yes in the dark yes and you're 110 feet underground yes at this point fantastic keep up keep keep on going okay so you get down there and of course everybody has their own personal zip line but nobody actually knows what's really happened to the person in front of them because by the time the person in front of them has reached the bottom of the zip line, the person at the top can't see them anymore. So they have no idea what's happened. They're, they're just ready for their, their zip line. And everybody gets to the bottom and it's time to jump into the water. So at this point we hadn't, we hadn't gotten in the water yet. Um, but of course, before you get in the water, you do want to warm up a little bit because this water is freezing okay by um, freezing what temperature are we talking here so uh it's about 15 degrees celsius so 56 degrees wow, yeah it's chilly it's chilly yeah it's really cold yeah um, and it's underground as well so it's not like you have any sunlight to warm you up or anything the glowworms don't emit very much heat oh <laughs> Wow. So, yeah. And so, of course, you warm up a little bit. So we have a bit of hot chocolate, have some cookies, and then it's time to jump in the water. So your guide hands you one of these black inflated tubes and they bring you to the ledge and you just look down at this ledge that's, you know, 15 feet below you. Or, I'm sorry, the water is 15 feet below you when uh -huh. you're standing on this ledge. You look out and your guide tells you, okay, so you want to jump and land inside your tube. Oh! So... <laughs> you're so you jumping have... in a dark cave 15 feet below you into the water? Yes. <sighs> this is great. This is great. <laughs> So yeah, you hold this tube behind you and basically your guide tells you what you want to do is jump out and kick your feet up. And sometimes that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, and it's okay if you don't land in your tube, but if you do, it, it feels awesome because you just nailed this jump. Basically you jump out, you kick your feet up so that your tube goes underneath you and you land smack onto the water with your tube underneath you and you're sitting in your tube comfortably. Now have people missed the water and not landed in the water? No, 
That's okay. never happened. Okay. Um, okay. The water is everywhere. It's, it would be really hard to miss the water. Okay. It's not not so hard to miss your tube. Really, really hard to miss the water. I've never heard of anybody missing the water. Okay. All right. Just checking. <laughs> yeah. And so. And, do, and you have your headlamp on at this point. Yes, you do have your headlamp on at this point. And so you jump into the water and then you continue to fl to go upstream. So mm -hmm. there's a rope there and uh, just along the side of the wall. And you can pull yourself along that rope to continue going upstream in, in the caves. So you're going against the water flow. Uh -huh. um, but at this point, the water is quite calm. So you're not you're not working very hard against like a massive stream of water or anything it's just nice calm smooth flowing water and so you work your way upstream and you get to a point where you can stand up and you continue walking upstream of course and you're talking to your guides and your guides tell you about the the formations in the cave the stalactites that we have and you look above and you see all of these stalactites hanging down and you reach a point where you hear all of this water flowing down and it's actually called an Avon. And so it's all of this water flowing down and you look up and it's basically just like a big hole um, in the surface, or I'm sorry, in, in the ceiling. And you can't quite see the, the top of the hole, but you know there's, there is a top because you can't see sunlight. Uh -huh. And that's actually caused from water just coming down and eroding away at the rock. Wow. And so you see that and then, you know, you continue on, you reach the very beginning of the cave, which is called the sump. The sump actually, um, that's where the cave begins. They call it a sump because that's where the water sumps out. Um, and so there's a stream that starts outside of the cave and it goes underground and then pops out into our cave. And so this is where our cave begins. And this is also the best place in the cave to see glowworms. Wow. Because you can reach up and literally you could touch these glowworms if you wanted to. Now, how and, many glowworms are, are in this space right now? Oh, thousands, millions, really. Wow. Um, so these glowworms are actually not very big at all. They, um, they grow to the length of a matchstick. Um, and that's as big as they get. And they're very, very skinny. If you were actually to shine your light on a glowworm, what you'd look, what you what you'd be looking at is like a, a long string of snot. <laughs> that's exactly what they it's look great. like. Great. It's great. And these glowworms, they lay down these these long strands um, of mucus. And this is actually their version of a spider web. This is how they catch their food. Now, glowworms are carnivores, is that right? It, it is, it's correct. Um, these, well, these glowworms, they eat mosquitoes and sandflies and mayflies and everything bad that sucks your blood, essentially. <laughs> um, so they're awesome. And so these, <clears throat> these glowworms, they, they're born, when they're born, they're almost microscopic. They're so, so tiny and they grow to the length of a matchstick. Um, and so this is the second stage of their life. They start off as an egg and they hatch out, they become a glowworm. And then they actually, when they reach about the right size, they pull up all of those threads that they set out to trap their food and they wrap themselves in a cocoon. They sleep in this cocoon for about two or three weeks. After that, they come out of this cocoon as what we call the fungus gnat. So the fungus gnat actually looks like an ugly mosquito. It's a little, mm -hmm. little ugly. Sometimes they glow just a little bit. And these fungus gnats, they no longer have a working mouth or digestive system. So they can't eat anything. And their sole purpose is to make love and die. Oh, <laughs> Wow. Wow. You live, you love, and you die. Exactly. 
So, so and what I, is the lifespan of a glowworm? How how long are they living and loving and before they so die? So, the glowworm is in its glowworm phase for about nine to ten months, and so it lives a total of maybe a year. Um, because it's in its glowworm phase for about nine to ten months, and it then comes into it, goes into its cocoon, lives in that for about two to three weeks, and then as a fungus gnat, it only really survives three to five days. Doesn't live very long. And these fungus gnats, basically, they make love, and then the female lays her eggs, she dies. And these these fungus gnats, a lot of the time what happens is they actually fly into these other threads of other glowworms that are hung down, and they get consumed by these other glowworms. So not only are they carnivores, they're also cannibals. This is great. This is, <laughs> I love the glowworm. <laughs> Yeah, most of the time we tell people that and they're just like, well, that's disgusting. I don't like glowworms anymore. No, they're fascinating. This is fascinating. I mean, What's my even... first encounter with a glowworm was in like my happy meal at McDonald's when I was five. So really? Yeah. Yeah. The glowworm nightlight. Um, but experience it, experiencing the glowworm for real inside a cave after zip lining through them, that sounds way better than a Happy Meal. <laughs> just maybe just a little bit. A little bit. Hey, I have to say my second favorite part of the tour is free climbing up waterfalls. Wait, hold on. Tell me that you are free climbing up waterfalls? Yes. Okay, tell me more. So you you get to a point where you, you've done a bit of walking, you've done a bit of scrambling, and your guides pull everyone together and they're like, hey guys, our trip has almost come to a close. We're really sorry, um, but we're about to do some really epic stuff. And they point to this small little hole that you didn't even know existed. And they're like, so just through that hole there, there's a lot of water coming through, as you can see. There are two waterfalls in there that we're going to free climb. Wow. And so they tell you a little bit about, um, you know, just waiting in line and making sure everybody gets up one at a time. And you, you crawl through this little hole you pop up on the other side and you can't hear anything. The, the roar of the waterfall is so loud. And you know, to be able to hear yourself, you'd have to be yelling. And so you get in there and your guide helps you and you, they point to this the steps that you take and where to put your hands, where to pull yourself up. And so as you're climbing up this rock wall, you're like, oh man, this is so scary. This is so scary. You're terrified. And then you get to a point where you're kind of comfortable. You're still on one wall. And your guide tells you, okay, now put your left foot on the other wall across from you. You have to step over the waterfall and put your left foot on the other side of the waterfall. So at this point, you're straddling the waterfall and it's terrifying, right? Wow. And then you continue to climb up and you get to a point where you're crawling over the waterfall. You're, you've climbed up and you're crawling over the waterfall and you end up in another small room. So in the small room, you can kind of hear yourselves a little bit, not really. You end up going to the next waterfall and it's quite similar. It's a little more open now. Um, and it can be actually quite scary when there's a lot of water flowing through and your guide says, okay, now put your foot right here, right into this water as strong as you can. And you just think to yourself, am I, is that okay? Am I going to fall? Is the water just going to, you know, brush my foot off? 
and you know, you so you trust your God and you put your foot in and you realize there's actually a rock under the, under all of this water and you're able to climb up. Wow. And then you get to the top of the second waterfall and you turn the corner and you see sunlight coming down. So you come out of this of this hole and you see all the sunlight coming down and you see the beautiful greenery around. There's still quite a bit of water flowing down and there's moss everywhere and it's just so lush and full of life. And that is your exit of the cave. That is grand. That is absolutely grand. Let's say uh, there's there's people out there who, who may have limited mobility and and climbing and free climbing uh, may not be an option. How can others still see the, the glow worms in the other caves if, if you do have limited mobility? So that's actually, that's our, our most adventurous tour in a sense. We also have other adventure tours. So the, the tour that I was describing, that's called the Black Abyss. We also have a lesser, lesser, well, not not as extreme black water rafting tour. And this one is called the Black Labyrinth. And this one actually doesn't require harnesses. You just take a tube into a cave. You do jump off some waterfalls and it doesn't require very much climbing. You do scramble through the cave a little bit, um, but you do still jump off of waterfalls and you can enjoy the glowworms floating in the dark. And on top of that, we have another tour um, called the Ruokuri walking tour. And so this is where you come into the cave and you experience the spirituality of the cave and you can experience the glowworms and have a small group with you. And you're walking through, well, you're walking on top of suspended walkways above the, the water channel. And so you can see more formations and other parts of the cave that these these wet tours, as we refer to them, don't experience. Um, and so the max max amount of people for this tour is 18 people. Mm-hmm. And then there's also the Waitomo Glowworm Caves. This is this is the cave that's known worldwide. This is the cave that everybody comes to visit because it's it's more widely known, of course, and it also has a greater capacity for tourists to come through. Um, their groups can be up to 50 people that they take through at once, um, and their spaces are a lot bigger. And this is this is great for anybody because um, you know you can take kids, you can take elderly, and there there aren't. Um, so it's it's great for everybody. Um, great. And this is this is our sister company. Um, so. And what's the name of the company? It's Waitomo Glowworm Caves. Okay, this is sister company. And yes. and for those maybe in a wheelchair, uh, could they could they enter this cave there through the sister company? So actually, they can't. But very cool fact, I forgot to mention this, the Ruokuri walking tour, the Ruokuri cave, we are the only wheelchair accessible cave in the Southern Hemisphere. So if you're looking for a wheelchair accessible uh, glowworm experience, who would you book that through? Uh, you would go through the legendary Blackwater Rafting Company. Got it. And, and then which tour would that be? It would be the Ruokuri cave tour. Okay, got it. And just making sure for our listeners uh, uh, that we have all the information available. Is there a best time to to see these glowworms? Are they active year-round? Yes, they are there year-round. Of course, during the summer months, like uh, December and January, this is when the glowworms have the most food because there are more mosquitoes, you know, spring has just come and there are more mosquitoes, there are more insects in the air. And so this is also when most glowworm eggs are laid and they hatch out 
And so there are more glowworms during this time, but not significantly more. You can go any time of the year and see tons of glowworms. Beautiful. Now, okay, the, you've got a group of eight people experience this, uh, max being eight people. Oh, yeah. what's the cost to, to do this tour? Um, so for the abyss, because we, we have multiple different tours that we run, um, but for the for, adventure tour. Yeah. Um, so for the adventure tour, the black abyss, which is the one that I did, mm -hmm. it is 246 New Zealand dollars. Okay. All right. And I've got to look up on my currency how that compares to the U.S. dollar right now. Are they about the same or? Um, actually, so the U.S. dollar is uh, worth a lot more than the New Zealand dollar. Um, so 246 New Zealand dollar equals to about 168 U.S. dollars. That's not bad. That's not bad for this type of experience. And and how yeah. long does this last, uh, this spelunking and ziplining glowworm black abyss adventure um so this lasts so we say that the, the, the tour is five hours um but the five hours begins when you suit up and when you get back got it um and so you spend actually about two and a half to three hours in the cave what about like height and weight restrictions for for this type of tour? Uh, like what type of skills do you need to have to be able to, to do this Black Abyss tour? So you can come as a com complete newbie. You don't have to have any skills at all. Um, for our Black Abyss tour, we do um, ask that you are at least 16 years old and 45 kgs at least. And the, the only reason is because you do get pretty cold down there because you're in the cave for such a long time. You do get pretty cold down there and you'd want the wetsuit to fit properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, we only have, you know, wetsuits that fit 45 kgs or more. And so 45 kgs translates to about 99 pounds. Now, as far as like hiking in the cave, uh, are you walking a long distance at all in the cave, or are you mostly rappelling and ziplining? Um, so you do walk a fair amount. Um, after you float back, after you've come to the sump, you float back, and you, you throw your tubes back up where you jumped into the water, and you continue wandering through the cave. So you do walk a fair amount, um, maybe like 200 meters okay okay yeah you're not embarking on a 10 mile journey in the cave no definitely not no um that would be very tough <laughs> <laughs> um so i mean it's it's only 200 meters but it seems just a bit longer because uh you know you're walking in water now and you're walking over rocks and so you take a while you take more caution to to step over these rocks and to um you know avoid this this water flow that could take you a bit further down um and like you're you're using the rocky wall that can be pretty rough as well as you're walking through and so you not only do you walk, you do a bit of climbing as well. And I, I have to say my second favorite part of the tour is free climbing up waterfalls. Now, let's say you're, you're coming, you're on a family vacation, you've got your kids in tow. Can you, can you do one of the tours where you're tubing through a cave or do you need to do a walking tour? Uh, Black Labyrinth tour. Mm -hmm. Our age limit for that tour is 12. Okay. And of course, at least 45 kgs. So our wetsuits do fit you properly. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, so it's, it's 12. So as long as your kids are at least 12 years old, you're more than welcome to take them on these tours. Got it. Just getting, getting the complete how to, to make this experience happen.
Yeah. And uh, now what's the closest airport to come there? Are there other sites and attractions you would suggest checking out if you're going to do a, a glowworm adventure? Yeah. Um, so the the closest airport, I would say, is probably um, the Auckland Airport. Um, and that's AKL Airport. Um, and this is really where most international flights come into. Mm -hmm. And this is on the North Island of New Zealand. And it's about two and a half hours away from the Waitomo Glowworm Caves. Other things in the area for our Lord of the Rings fans, and even for people that aren't Lord of the Rings fans, Hobbiton is a great experience. This is where um, Peter Jackson filmed his Lord of the Rings trilogy. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so what, what else should, should people see while they're in the area? Um, so in the area within, um, you know, within North Island, I would highly recommend going out to Kaitiaki, or I'm sorry, to Rotorua and doing the Kaitiaki whitewater rafting. Um, if you guys are into the adventure tourism side of things, it's amazing out there. Um, and you go over the world's highest commercially rafted waterfall. Whoa, whoa. I'm loving this. I'm absolutely loving this. I'm adding to my bucket list as we speak. Yeah. So, I mean, New Zealand is definitely where you want to go if you're looking for adrenaline and adventures and stuff there. I mean, Queenstown is the adventure capital of the world. And that's down in the South Island of New Zealand. Now, what about food and, and tipping? Uh, how, how is the food? Is it a tipping culture? Uh, what might you need to know about coming to New Zealand? Tipping is not customary. Um, it's always appreciated, of course. And um, I mean, being a guide in the cave, most Americans that came through, of course, tipped us because that's customary in America. Um, but it's, it's never expected. It's not customary in New Zealand. And the food is really great if you love, you know, like roast lamb and um, that kind of food. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, um, I'm i more a fan of, you know, Mexican food and whatnot. And so that's what I've really missed from mm -hmm. Texas. Mm -hmm. But um, they also have amazing Indian food. Really? Indian yes. food in New Zealand? Yeah. yeah. I never would have guessed. Me neither. <laughs> oh, wow. And anything else you'd like to add? I think, to be honest, if if anybody really does want to come to New Zealand and do the Waitomo Glowworm Caves, I urge them to also go to the South Island because it is so beautiful down there. And there's so much to do and so much to see. Um, there's, you know, Mount Cook down there. There's so many hikes that you can do in Mount Cook that are stunning. Even if you don't do any hikes, even if you just drive through Mount Cook, it is absolutely beautiful. That area is stunning. Um, and there's also Queenstown, which is, you know, the, the adventure capital of the world. So there's, there's so much to do there. Um, there's, you know, jet boating, whitewater rafting, canyoning, uh, skydiving, like anything you could possibly think of, really. And also Milford Sound. So Milford Sound is in the Fjordlands, and doing a cruise through there is absolutely stunning. I would, I would hate for somebody to come to New Zealand and not come to the South Island. All so right. I'd recommend it. This is fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Christine. of you're, course. This is a, you're a wealth of information. And maybe because of you, uh, people start planning trips to go to New Zealand and, and experience the glowworms and the adventures around it. Thank you so much, Gail. Um, I guess this is something I could have mentioned, but I, I, like it's it's hard because if I were to mention it, people would expect it. Um, but singing in the cave is phenomenal. Um, so while I was in New Zealand, I actually learned quite a few Maori songs, 
And um, I would sing to the clients when I took them to the sump and we would float back in like in the dark, just enjoying the glowworms and the acoustics in the cave just make your voice sound amazing. And so that's the only place I'll ever really sing. I won't sing anywhere else. Would you sing right now? Um, I mean, I, I could try. I don't sound half as great, you know, like when I'm not in a cave. Okay, give it a try. Okay. This is the very first Modi song that I learned. Pokare <laughs> kare Now why you to rua Fiti auto ko e hine Marino 